Chapter Three. Rama saves the day. What's this? Wondered Rama aloud on hearing a thundering sound. It seemed that it was coming from under the river. Rama, Lakshman, and Sage Vishvamitra were on a boat crossing River Ganga. Meandering through fields and forests, Sage Vishvamitra had told them many stories. The hermitage they had halted at the previous night belonged to disciples of Lord Shiva, and it was here that he had once burnt Karma Deva, the Indian equivalent of Cupid, the god of love, to ashes. Why? For shooting arrows of love while he was meditating. Swoosh, swoosh. There it was again. Rama looked at Vishvamitra. Vishvamitra explained, "Right now, we are at the confluence of Ganga and Sarayu, which is the source of this sound." After reaching the southern end of Ganga, the team continued their journey on foot. They passed a dry, barren forest, which looked very out of place. Vishvamitra explained that it was once a lush green patch of woodland where sages enjoyed meditating, but a demon called Sunda could not tolerate this. When Sunda refused to lead them in peace, Agastya, a very powerful sage, burnt him down. All this was fascinating for Rama and Lakshman, who were amazed at the power of the sages. Vishvamitra continued with the story. Now Sunda's wife Tataka, along with her two sons Maricha and Subahu, naturally wanted revenge. Agastya also cursed them to become man-eating demons. In vengeance, Tataka burnt the forest completely, and it became the deserted barren land that it is now. Maricha and Subahu then took shelter of Ravana. And now, I depend on you and Lakshman to save the sacrifice from the deadly trio of Tataka, Maricha, and Subahu. Vishvamitra brought Rama's attention back to the present. He knew that Ram could easily kill the trio, but he also knew what could stop him. Rama would hesitate to kill a demoness, because he worshipped every woman like a mother. His respect for women would not allow him to kill a demoness, so Vishvamitra told Rama what kind of a woman she was. Tataka is not worthy of respect. She is a monster. Even the demigods are scared of her acts of terrorism. As and when necessary, evil beings have to be killed, whether men or women. It is your duty to carry out such missions, to protect the innocent, even if it appears ruthless or sinful. Rama thought for a moment. What should he do? His father had told him to follow Sage Vishvamitra's instructions, so that is what he must do. He reasoned to himself. I'm, I'm ready. ready. He declared loudly and picked up his extraordinary bow and pulled its string to release it. The loud twanging sound it created shook the entire forest. The poor birds and animals fled, imagining that their end was near. Tataka heard the sound too. Who dared to challenge her in her domain? She rushed out to punish the culprit. Rama and Lakshman saw her from a distance. She was humongous, as big as a mountain. 
Her footsteps created huge pits that filled with water gushing out from under the ground. With every step, she crushed hundreds of animals to death. Was this really a woman? As she came closer, her garland became visible. It was not made of flowers, but elephants. The trunk of one elephant was tied to the tail of another. This elephant garland was around her neck. Her ears were studded with elephant heads. Her teeth resembled the trident of Yamaraj, the god of death. She was like a tornado approaching Rama. But he stood calmly with his bow and aimed an arrow at her. But his hand faltered, uneasy at the thought of killing a woman. He decided to simply maim her instead of killing her. But that was a mistake. She hid from Rama's view and hurled huge rocks at both Rama and Lakshman. Vishvamitra, guessing Rama's intentions, warned the duo that her powers would increase enormously once the sun set. The time to kill her was now! His voice carried such urgency that Rama realised his mistake. Just then, Tataka laughed at his folly. (laughs) Rama now knew where she was hiding. He shot an arrow in that direction and that was the end of Tataka. She fell to the ground in a huge pile of flesh. As soon as Tatika fell, the universe celebrated and the forest returned to its original glory. With Tatika gone, everyone relaxed. Now the sacrifice began. Rama and Lakshman had to watch out for Maricha and Subahu, who could attack from any direction day or night. The two boys were like two eyes, alert and watchful. Six days passed under the vigil of Rama and Lakshman without any danger to the sacrifice. It was the last phase of the sacrifice, with flames reaching the sky All the sages were glowing, anticipating success. When all of a sudden, they heard a loud shriek from above. Maricha and Subahu were not alone. There were thousands of demons with them, each with four fangs and eyes emitting fire. They covered the area with spurious clouds that rained blood. Along with blood, they showered arrows, spears and other weapons on the sages. Not only that, they also uttered foul words from their foul mouths. They couldn't actually descend because of the pious mantras chanted by the sages. So they remained suspended in mid-air. And with one deadly arrow... Rama flung Maricha 800 miles away into the ocean. Another arrow and Subahu burst into flames instantly, reduced to nothing but ashes. Immediately, the clouds disappeared, giving way to soothing sunshine. The sacrifice was over and what a success it was. Without Rama and Lakshman, it would have been impossible. Vishvamitra heaved a sigh of relief. Rama asked his guru if there was anything else they could do for him. Vishvamitra happily asked them to accompany him to Mithila, where a yagya was organised by King Janak. The biggest attraction of the event was Shiva's bow. What was so special about it? 
They'd heard about the famous bow, which was so heavy that it was impossible to lift. Even gods and demons were unable to lift and restring it. Lord Shiva had given away his bow to celestial beings. And then it had been passed on to a king as a reward. And finally, it had reached Mithila, where it was kept with great care and respect. Oh, this was too good an opportunity to miss. They agreed to go to Mithila and continue their adventure. Thus ends Chapter 3. Rama Saves the Day From the Illustrated Ramayana for Children Good night, children. Sweet dreams of Lord Rama. Jai Shri Ram. <laughs>